On our last session, we discussed breakouts, where we discussed the good breakouts and, of course, the false breakouts. If you've not had a chance to watch the session, this is the video to click on. Now, when you're talking about false breakouts, I give the different ways to identify them so that you don't get yourself trapped in the wrong direction. Now, in this session today, we're continuing with the breakouts, but today we want to talk about trade setups. How can you use either the first breakouts or the good breakouts to have awesome trade setups? So that is what we'll be discussing here. So stay put. I'm Onjiro Gishangi from Forex Expert Trading Academy, and today we talk about trade setup based on breakout appreciation to all the members of the forex exploit trading family we appreciate you thank you for the continued support and keep sending us messages and leaving comments or videos that you like let us know the videos you'd like us to add to the channel and of course if you're having any challenges with your trading reach out you can reach me on my page on facebook which is forex exploit online academy go there send me a message and i'll be able to assist as much as I can. Those people who are asking for mentorship, you also find it on the Forex Expert Online Academy page on Facebook or on LinkedIn. There's a number there that you can WhatsApp and we can talk about either personal mentorship training or if you just want me to help you through your trading challenges. If you're new to my channel, I do have lots of topics on this channel make sure that you watch the videos from the bottom up that way you get to understand what forex is about and you also get to pile up information in a meaningful manner if you're an intermediate trader this is one one video that you really need to understand and you need to watch this is how to uh, spot institutional market analysis because mostly traders are trapped by force reversals or imagining that the market is going to reverse while it has not shown any institutional reversal behavior so make sure that you master everything on this video if you want to be a successful trader and do not forget the king of this market is what we call market structure so for any trader out there make sure that you master the rules of market structure and this will be an added advantage to your trading journey do not forget to subscribe to my channel and of course click the notification bell so that you're notified every time that we have new videos also if you don't have a good regulated broker i have a broker recommendation therefore you can just click on this ic icon link here and it will take you to the broker's website when we're talking about trade setups when it comes to breakouts you can take these trade setups in these different ways one you can wait for the lower time frame continuation pattern that is where you wait for the break to happen on your higher time frame then go to a lower time frame and look for a continuation pattern now the continuation pattern here can either be channels it can be wedges can be triangles and all that we've discussed the continuation patterns on the chart pattern video so maybe you can watch that video to understand the different patterns that uh, chart patterns that we have in the market but now when we're talking about break this is what you expect let's say you're on a selling side then somehow the market decides to break to the top break this without giving a reversal pattern now how will you know that this is a false break or if it's a good break of course you watch the part one of the first breakouts and you're going to understand if it's a first break or a good break now let's assume that it was a first break in this case so the market is expected to come down but at this area here you do not know if this break is real or not so what are you going to do this is a higher time frame let's say this is h4 it's happening on the four hour chart so what will you do you're going to go to a lower time frame let's say 15 minutes or 30 minutes or even five minutes then at this area where there is the stop hand or at this area where there is this break you want to find a continuation pattern so on the lower time frame you want to find either there will be a wedge or there will be a build up which is a consolidation or maybe there will be a triangle in there can be any type of triangle but you want to find a continuation pattern now what 
are you going to do with that continuation pattern on the lower time frame you're going to wait for the break let's say you have this channel down and the market is pushing this so you want it to break to the bottom side and remember you do not join the market with the break what are you going to do you're going to wait for that reactive push retesting remember the retest must be reactive i've discussed this on the liquidity video how to make sure that this move is reactive if it's not reactive then that retest will not hold because you want to have loss of momentum if there's a lot of momentum with the retest that means the retest will not happen and there are chances that the market will just continue upward but that is not what you want to see as a trader you want to see the reactive move and now one candlestick pattern here maybe an end gap that will continue the market to the downside so that is if you have a channel suppose it's a build up again you want to see the market building up there will be a break to the bottom side if it was a false break we expect the market to go back to the older trend and then you want to see a reactive move back to that build-up, maybe to this area, if there was a block, if there was an imbalance and all that, then you're going to wait for a candlestick pattern. And if you don't know the candlestick patterns to look for, again, there's a video on this channel on candlestick patterns. And not just candlestick patterns, but those that are stable and the ones that give you good trade setup. So once you have a a candlestick pattern here you want the market now to break to the bottom side and therefore you can join now this is what we call break and retest so this was the break to the bottom side and this was a retest the same thing if it was a triangle you want the market to break again you want a reactive move this reactive move is very very important i don't know how to overemphasize it but this is the move that tells you that things are good or it's it's okay to get into that trade again you want to see a candlestick pattern here and then you can join the market to the downside so that is how you use lower time frame uh continuation pattern if you're dealing with a false break suppose you're on the buying side because on the buying cycle the market would be pushing to the top side and then somehow there will be a break to the bottom side now this sometimes happen if there was liquidity here there's a lot of money i've talked about the different types of liquidities we have now how will you tell that this is just a grab and it's not that the market is reversing of course one you can watch the institutional reversal pattern if there is no reversal pattern and it's not just a reversal pattern but institutional reversal pattern or the money or the volume reversal pattern you need to watch that video to understand what i mean with the volume patterns so if there is no volume pattern up here that means that this market will break take out the liquidity or just grab this money then continue now how will you know that the market will actually continue even after this break how do you tell that this is a false break again on part one i discussed how to tell that that was a false break so now how will you join this market back in of course you go to a lower time frame and look for the patterns now if it's a wedge or a channel you want the market to break to the top react back and give you a candlestick pattern that warrants continuation to the top side and you can join the market to the other side again if it's triangle you want the market to break to the top uh, react again a reactive move which is very very important at this point here you want to have a candlestick pattern this candlestick pattern is what will dictate that it is time to join the market now note an end gap in candlestick the long week candlestick multiple rejection kind of candlesticks those are the kind of candlesticks that you'll be looking for and of course to have a list of that or to memorize really get them in you you watch the candlestick video i have already given that information out so join this market to the top side any any continuation pattern can be a wedge can be a triangle can be a range or what we call the rectangle the rectangle is basically the build up it's called a rectangle because you can actually box it so this is a range or you can call it a build up you want it to break retest back 
and move never join the market with the brick always wait for the retest it's usually heavier and of course it's risk free so that is how to use uh, the lower time frame continuation pattern to join the trade setup if you're liking this video so far give it a thumbs up leave a comment on the comment section and share it with your trading community a chat example we have this buy area being violated or broken to the bottom side by this selling candlestick now you do not know if this break is going to hold or not so what do you do you go to a lower time frame and you wait for a continuation pattern so that you can join the trade at the right point instead of chasing this and then you'll be caught by this retest it's easier or it's safer if you go to a lower time frame and look for a continuation pattern remember i've said in a lower time frame the continuation pattern can be channels they can be wedges can be triangles so you go to a lower time frame and look for a chart a chart continuation pattern and here you can see that we have these wedge to the top you'd wait for it to be broken and after break you'd want to wait for a retest on the previous video i talked about how not to join the break with the breaking candlestick always wait for the retest because the retest will give you a better entry i think that is on the retracement video i talked about how to join in with the best risk free kind of entry so wait for the break and join with the retest that would have given you an opportunity to trade all this and this is one of the ways that if you get this kind of breaks on a higher time frame then this qualifies to be a very 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 profitable swing trade this is how you can actually swing or hold a trade for a long time knowing that it will not reverse on you why because one the bias is on the higher time frame you can see that here i'm dealing with the daily and the entry here is on the four hour therefore it means this volume the trade that has good volume and therefore it's very safe to hold for a while number two is when you encounter stop hands now on the higher time frame let's say you're pushing all downside and there'll be a time that this high this swing high will be stop hunted or there'll be a candlestick or tail sticking out and then the market continues down now how do you join this market after identifying or verifying that it's a stop hunt so how do you join this trade after you've identified this to be just a force or a stop hunt what you do is you can go to the lower time frame let's say this was on h1 or h4 or even the daily you can go to the lower time frame of your choice and look for lower time frame consolidation now when you talk about consolidation this is the same as build up or arrange so you want to go to the lower time frame and identify a rectangle kind of movement Oh, yeah, we call it rectangle or you can call it build up or you can call it consolidation. So you want to wait for the market to consolidate for a while. Wait for the break. Now, please do not join the break. No, pay attention to the reactive move. And at this area, if it gives you a good candlestick pattern, you join that trade to the bottom side the same way if you're on a buying cycle so the market will be pushing up and then at some point it may violate this previous low maybe with some weeks or maybe even at the body of a candlestick or two candlestick in the reverse direction now if you identify that to be a stop hunt or a force break you go to the lower time frame and again look for a rectangle move a range or a build up you want the market to range or build up in there break to the top do not join without break wait for a reactive move back into the break once it gives you a candlestick pattern that shows buy so this can be maybe a morning star can be an engulfing candlestick can be a long week candlestick whatever candlestick pattern it gives you here that warrants for a buy then you can use that as entry and an inside candlestick is also very strong so maybe you can get a harami uh, down here and then you can join the market to the top side so that is 
how you join in the stop hunt without thinking of you know getting into the market immediately you see some tails because you don't know maybe even with the long weeks that you get here sometimes it can be just a trap and then the market just continues if for example there was a reversal pattern down here the market will still continue it will react to this high but still continue to the top side so it's important that you first identify it to be a stop hand and that is something you can do using the information i shared on part one now a chart example so this is how it would look on a chart so we have this previous day high then we have these tails and a candlestick and a very tiny tiny candlestick on this area you see we had momentum candlestick then followed by very tiny candlesticks now when this happen where we have where we have this momentum candlestick then the momentum dies off and you can see that by the size of the other candlestick now they are tiny then suddenly you have a different colored candles showing up we had green 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 then all of a sudden we have a red candlestick and it has top hunted the previous day high or the previous high then that shows that this is a stop hunt now you do not need to struggle on entry on this higher time frame you see we are on four hour so what you do you can go to your m15 and wait for a rectangle a rectangular move or what we call build up you it's called a rectangular move because you can actually just box it so pick the high of that day and the low of that day and set in a rectangle now wait for that box to be broken and you can see there was this momentum candlestick that actually broke it to the bottom side now it's important that you pay attention to that break because if the break gives you any significant move for example you can see that this is a uh, this is a block in here or this is also a gap you can maybe treat this as a gap or a kissing candle block so you'd wait for the market to actually retest that and if you use the kissing candlesticks we have that block and your entry can be either 50 percent or 100 percent of that block and you can actually join that trade at either 100 or 50 percent mark and you can join and enjoy that beautiful beautiful move so that is how to use the rectangle or the consolidation on lower time frame if you encounter a stop hand from the higher time frame number three on how to join in the breaks you can use what we call the shallow pullback pullback what is a pullback this is the movement to the other direction or the opposite direction for a while we have different types of pullbacks you can watch them on the pullback video remember not all pullbacks are the same and not all pullbacks are traded the same way so it's important that you learn the different types of pullbacks and how to trade them today specifically we're going to talk about the shallow pullback now what's a shallow pullback this is a narrow pullback a short a short timed pullback now for example if you're on a selling cycle let's say the market has been trending down then there is a break to the top side now you do not know if this break is real or not so how will you join or how will you trade it let's say maybe this was an institutional reversal pattern where we have the double edged sword how do you join this market without you know so much fear or losing so much or having such a big drawdown what you're gonna do is you're going to wait for the shadow pullback just a tiny pullback and once you have a candlestick pattern here that is showing continuation you can join that trade to the top side so this tiny move here is what we refer as to the shadow pullback now why is it termed as shadow pullback because the normal pullbacks here, or the wide range pullbacks are usually curved like this they take time the market to push then at some point it will come down 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 at some point and then go back so this is the normal pullback or what we call the wide uh, widespread or the normal pullback that we have they usually extensive they react they trap for a while but when we talk about a shallow one it's really short time so if you're in a buying cycle so the market has been pushing up and then suddenly it decides to break to the bottom side now since you don't know at what point to join this push to the downside you can as well wait for 
a shallow pullback and then join the market to the downside now this is narrow or short timed and therefore it gives you an opportunity to join that move before the actual retracement or the actual before the actual pullback which is wide and really trapping and then you can join the market so the shallow pullback here gives you an opportunity to join this move before the actual wide or extensive pullback so as chart example so here we have this break to the bottom side the market has been pushing up this is on four hour then there's the break of this area with this red candlestick here you wait for this shadow pullback is this shadow pullback for the market to continue before the actual wider uh, pull back to join so you can actually be jo uh, enjoying you can actually enjoy this move before the wider pullback happens or you can swing this trade from this area or with this engulfing candlestick and still continue the move downside another example an example to the top side so we have this flip zone area here the market has broken it to the top side but you're not sure if the market is going to continue up or maybe it's going to turn out to be just a false break and the market continues down but the formation of this shallow pullback here the one that i've highlighted the formation of this shallow pullback is an opportunity or it's a sign that the market will push higher therefore you can enjoy this trade before the actual wide spread or before the actual pullback and then you can continue now this shallow pullback is usually a very good sign for a trader because it tells you that the move was real the break was not a fake break and therefore even if you do not use the shallow pullback to enjoy this one move you can actually wait for the actual pullback back into that flip zone and enjoy the move so the shadow pullback is an indicator or it is a signal that the move is good and when the real or the extensive pullback happens you can actually swing that move to the top side and given that this was happening on a higher time frame which is the four hour that gives you a very very high volume or high value trade setup then we have what we call the build up exhaustion now this is on higher time frame sometimes the market will consolidate when you talk about build up by now you know it's a range it's a consolidation i've heard many posts on the page explaining that after every build up or after every consolidation there is usually that explosion or that very huge move that happens after the consolidation now how will you tell that the consolidation has come to an end or there is exhaustion it has ended there is no more consolidation and therefore you prepare to join the market now this is what will happen on a higher time frame there is usually that push let's say the market has been pushing downside so the market has been pushing down then on the middle stage, remember, there are three stages of a trend. I explained that on the previous video. So at some point, the market decides to just consolidate for a while or get into a build-up way where it creates a floor and a ceiling and it keeps just pushing. Now, at what point, how will you know? Remember, this is happening on the higher time frame. How will you know that the consolidation has come to an end? Or will you still keep you know scalping trading from the top from the bottom and then you end up either missing the explosion move or missing that big move out of the consolidation or getting your account blown because maybe it exploded while you're trading in the opposite direction now it's very very easy when this is happening there is usually going to be a trick move remember the market was coming from up because this was a downside movement and this is the second stage of the trend therefore you'd expect that the market should break or the explosion should be actually to the bottom side but this is not what will happen this is textbook this is not what will happen so this is somehow that like what happens mostly is that there'll be this consolidation and then there'll be a fake push to the top this usually happens almost all the time why because we were on second stage trend so there's no way this move is going to be real 
because if you are if you're on the second stage of the trend it means that we still have another exhaustion stage to move but they can give free money so there will be this first move to the top and then the market is going to either give you a sword which is also another explosive move down or it's going to give you a sword to this area then a reactive move and then the market continues to stage three so this should be the ideal or textbook way where you have the consolidation and then the market continues but this is what usually happens almost all the time now suppose on you're on the buying cycle so the market been pushing up up and then when it gets to the mid stage it goes into a build up or into a consolidation again the market to range for a while remember a range the the longer the range the higher the explosion or the higher the the more the volume or the higher or the stronger the move will be so it's very very rewarding when the range has taken a longer time for a trader so let's say this takes three weeks or maybe it takes even a month or two or maybe a month and a half or eight weeks that's still okay then you're going to find that the market will will give that explosion move and it's usually very big or very huge there is usually that one momentum candlestick that can even last for four hours a four hour candlestick just pushing down and then everybody who trades breakout and whatnot they'll be joining the market to the downside but this is wrong why because what at what stage did the build-up start if the build-up puts at stage two you know you still have another extra stage to push to the top side but if the build-up remember they also build up at the exhaustion point or at stage three i think i discussed that on the trend a video so maybe you can make notes on that if this is on stage two of the trend then this move you know is a fake and what will you be doing you'll be waiting for the market to give you a candlestick pattern down here so it will going to either give you another stretch back then react and the market goes to stage three so this is the real move while this was the fake again this is the real move while this was a fake now how do you do this now remember this is on higher time frame so this is happening maybe on the four hour so what are you going to do you're going to go to the lower time frame let's say you're on the selling cycle let's start with the sell side you're going to go to the high uh, lower time frame so if this was h4 maybe you're going to use your m15 so you want a lower time frame you want the market to violently break these equal highs that have been happening here or previous days highs that remember it's a range so they are almost equal relatively equal highs you want this market to push to the top side with this fake move now this fake move if you're using a tdi or you using the rsi there is also gonna be divergent so on the lower time frame you want the market the market has been ranging so basically there could be relatively equal highs so you want a stop hunt of those highs and then wait for a candlestick pattern at the tip of that stop hunt and then join the market to the downside this is to continue this move therefore this top hunt or this move does fake this fake break to the top side on higher time frame you wait for it to also happen on the lower time frame but because you already know that you're pushing to the third stage of this uh, selling cycle you only wait to have a candlestick pattern forming at the peak of this move and you can join usually this kind of setup do not give an immediate retest what usually happens mostly is that there will be that move and then there will be some sort of build up at this area for a while and then the market just explodes to the downside so with this kind of build up exhaustion there is no much break and retest is usually just that move uh, down then maybe a small build up and then the market does explode so if you miss this and you encounter this build up just look for the highest point place your order and now sit through 
see through this and don't have itchy fingers where you want to click out no please no itchy fingers remember i've already said after the build up the market will definitely push down so see through this if you missed this now see through if you already took this trade here and the build up happens don't get scared don't click out if anything this is also an opportunity for you to add another position but don't just add any other position make sure that you wait for a good trade or good candlestick pattern happening here so maybe you can wait for a doji or maybe an ngav and if that shows up here now set in your trade sit tight be very patient and wait for the market to push your way now if you're on a, on a buying cycle again you're going to have the market having relatively equal lows with this build up there could have been equal lows and then the market will violently violate all those lows with a very huge momentum candlestick now don't join the cell it's a lie it's a trap why remember we were on the mid stage of the trend therefore we still have one more push to the top this was a lie so what are you going to do you're going to wait for it to continue pushing until it gets to the end and gives you a candlestick pattern so here if you get a harami or what we call an inside candlestick that will be perfect if you get an ngav usually they don't give you an ngav after this momentum candlestick because this is usually a very huge candlestick can actually be 40 pips or even 30 pips depending with the asset if you have this on euro usd or gpp usd that can also be 60 pips worth of a candlestick so an engulf is not something that you find but an inside candlestick yes a shooting star yes a morning star yes but whatever you get pay attention to the change of colors on the next candlestick there after the close of that candlestick you're free to join that trade to the top side now you may not get a retest just like i've explained these kind of setups don't give a quick retest but they have a tendency of giving a build so if you push a significant number of uh, pips then give a build now if this build happens you look for a good candlestick pattern join in or take your second position and wait for the explosion to the top side something else that i would want to add is these kind of setups if you're using rsi as an indicator or a tdi they have a tendency of giving you divergence and the minute you spot divergence with this kind of setup it now turns to be a high value trade setup i've done a video i've compiled a video on the characteristics of a high value trade setup therefore add this to this to that list watch that list on the high value trade setups and add this one there that if you find the divergence on this kind of build up exhaustion that means that it is also high value and therefore you are going to have a harvest now let's have a chart example so this is euro usd one hour chart you see we had this build up here the market was creating relatively equal lows you see all these so these are all lows being created then at the day where the exhaustion was happening look at this momentum candlestick a whole hour of selling breaking those laws taking out that liquidity taking out that money taking it all out with this very huge candlestick now the people who trade breakouts or the people who trade momentum candlestick now you could have gotten caught by thinking that hey this is a very huge candlestick and therefore we expect the market to be continuing down no if you've already watched this video or after now you've watched this video you'd know that this is a trap this is a lie there is no move to the bottom side why we've been coming from point one or we've been coming from a buying cycle would expect the explosion to be in the same direction so what do you do on the higher time frame you're gonna give chance a whole hour for this candlestick to actually close and the next candlestick is usually different color so this was red and our entry would be on this green candlestick now to have that you know that optimal entry you go to a lower time frame so this is the same day one you see that violation that happened with a very huge candlestick and these four candlesticks here 
are making up for this one hour candlestick and you want to have a candlestick pattern remember do not be in a haste when you go to the lower time frame you got to pay attention to the time frame you've seen that momentum one hour full one hour okay so do not join the trade with this green candlestick here no this one hour candlestick must completely close before you join that trade and now with the close of that red candlestick was this tiny red candlestick here and what happened the next candlestick was an engulfing candlestick a bullish engulfing candlestick you can actually let it close or since the red candlestick has already closed you just join the market at this sniper uh entry now i know the people who like sniper trade setups or sniper trade entries this is your opportunity to shine these kind of uh, moves usually give opportunities for you to exercise your sniper skills something else that makes it high value is of course divergence if you're using this is tdi you can see that it's slanting to the top side while the market from the previous day low was actually slanting to the downside and once there is divergence it means there is money there is money there is money and therefore you prepare to re -re 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 push the market so you see with the break of the structure there was this mini move but again you could have waited for this uh, build up the following day to join the same move and now the good thing with this kind of moves is that the following day you just take a continuation move after these are uh, small retracement or small uh pull back and then you just join the uh, the move you just continue with the move without even looking for a trade setup because there's usually no trade setup when it comes to continuation moves and you can hold it see how much you'd have earned if you just held it from this area just continue and the next time you have such a trade setup don't close it with that end of the day exercise the patience exercise the patience hold it continuously to the next day or if you can't trail stop it to the end of the next day because that means you not leave any money on the table and you will have and the maximum that trade setup can offer we also have the trend line breaks now a trend line break is one of the most profitable way of trading i've said this a million times that the most profitable technical trading style is use of trend lines and with that i have a video on the different types of trend lines that there is and how to use them whether you want to use the passive ones you want to use uh, the aggressive ones whether you're a queen or king of the counter trend line for me counter trend lines are it i will have counter trend lines on every asset that i have and they usually usually work much if you're liking this video so far give it a thumbs up leave a comment on the comment section and share it with your trading community also force breaks when it comes to trend lines now how do you tell that this is not a fake break and how do you take that high value trade one you can use the axis now when it comes to this kind of setup i want to be very clear that this requires a lot of patience this requires you to sit on your hands and typically just watch the market come to you you do not go looking for anything when it comes to these trend line breaks sit on those hands and wait for these two ways to happen one axis i've already mentioned axis on book five and i've also uh, talked about axis on other videos but basically axis is where many school of traders are eyeing the the market at it's a price point where there are different scholars or different schools of traders paying attention to that area so if you're moving average that could be an area where your moving average has crossed if you're a block trader that could be a price point where there is a block to the new members of the expert family subscribe click on the notification bell so that you are notified every time we have a new video and leave a comment about this video and also future videos you'd like us to add to all our other members we appreciate your continued support if you're a support and resistance trader that could be also your key area so that price point where all these things or all these schools are 
converging art or a meeting art is what we call an axis. Okay, so this can be, for example, if you're on a selling cycle, the market would be pushing down and then they could be that area where the market reacted back and all that. Now, this is a key area. Why? Because it's where the market uh, retested before it continued down. Now, if you're having your trend line can also be pushing down in the same area. Remember, if you're having a moving average, maybe it's at the same area. So when this area here has the trend line, has the moving average and also uh, the block or key area, then that becomes an axis. Now, to make sure that you're not trading a false break, you can wait for the market to get into an axis before you join the market to the direction that is pushing this is what i'm saying we had this market pushing down then it retraced back or it had this pull back now at what point do you join back you can join when the market gets into an axis suppose it was on a buying cycle so the market been pushing up 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 then we have this area the market retests to that area and you want to push it up now how do you tell that this is a safe spot for you to join the buy trade one there could be a trend line pushing in the same area so it has pushed in the same support area or a buying zone or a flip zone it uh, you could also have a moving average in there so you could also have be having a moving average in the same area now this area becomes a good point to join the trade why because it's an axis point it has different items in the same price area and therefore it becomes of high value so when you have a trend line break you do not just want to join the market just because a trend line has uh, given a break or a touch no it's important if that break or that touch was at an axis area so if you're a trend line trader you can actually add a moving average on your trend lines you can also maybe practice uh, support and resistance or you can use the block a chart example this is a four hour chart we have been pushing downside then we had this trend line break to the top side now there was the break with this huge momentum buy candlestick now you cannot join the buy move after the close of this candlestick and if you did you'd lose money out of this uh, reactive move now what do you do this is an area where you just sit remember this is an exhaustion area it's at the source low or it's at the peak low therefore you'd expect the market to reverse but it does not just happen magically it takes time for the market to actually turn to the opposite direction so what can you do you need to look for an axis you need to look for an axis first things first identify a previous zone that has been violated or that has become a flip zone or where money has changed hands for example look at this low here it was initially a very strong buy zone every time it was touched the market would push up then eventually the market pushed down violating it making it a sell zone now this area here qualifies to be a flip zone so you draw your your zone remember zone is a rectangle okay it's not a straight line then the now it was a selling cycle and sorry it became a selling zone then violated to the top side to become a buy zone that's still not enough you want the market to play around it just draw it and leave it that is one number two you want to set in your moving up now since you're on the higher time frame you can add those moving averages that give you direction there is a video on moving averages you can pick so you can take maybe a simple a simple moving average or an exponential moving average that gives you direction and then you just set it in so here i've set in my 100 sma and you want to find or you want to see the interaction with your 100 sma or whatever moving average you have you want to pay attention to when it interacts with your zone very very important now what do you want to see you want to see 
step number three where the market is still comes to the point where there is interaction between your moving average and your zone and you can see this key area it tapped on our moving average Remember, it had already broken to the top side of our moving average, showing us that the market has actually changed from sell to buy. So for our entry, we're looking for that area where it's in our zone and tapping on our moving average and giving us the loss of momentum for a sell. See this tiny candlestick? They show that the momentum is dying down. The sell power is dying off. And once it touches our moving average, what happened? There was that explosive move away and the market continued up. So you do not want to join the market just because there was a trend line move, a break, especially if it's at the source low or it's at the exhaustion stage of the trend. Remember, it's very, very important for you to identify the stage of the trend before you get into the trade. Why? Because the stage will dictate if that break is actually real or if it's just a, a false break. And because this was an exhaustion, we would expect the change. And the change has been found by our zone, of course, our flip zone, and the touch of our moving average giving us a very high value trade setup and from this area you can actually have a swing trade if you're a swing trader and you find this kind of setup on your four hour or on your daily or on your weekly now you can just set in your trade and move these are not the kind of trades that go against you or the kind of trades that get stop hunted no these are steady high value trade setups and therefore will give you very good money also on trend line breaks we have what we call the continuation pattern on lower time frame on our first point i already discussed the continuation patterns these are wedges channels triangles rectangles and so forth so with a trend line break you can also look for a continuation uh, pattern on the lower time frame to enter that trade or to take that trade based on your trend line break so this is what i mean let's say we were on the sell side and there was a trend line break to the top side now you do not know at what point to join that trade what you do you go to the lower time frame there will also be a trend line remember this is on the higher time frame let's say h4 h1 daily so on the lower time frame there will also be that break what's happening on the higher time frame should also be uh, shown on the lower time frame because why the market is fractal okay it's a mirror so there's that break on the lower time frame but now with the lower time frame there are so many candlesticks everything will be happening there will be sales there will be buy so here you want to have a chart pattern or a chart continuation pattern let's say maybe it's a channel or a wedge now you want to wait for the break and maybe a retest and join the market to the top side so instead of join the market here instead of join the market here and losing money you actually go to the lower time frame and wait for a continuation pattern to appear and once the continuation pattern appears there will be a break remember don't join with a break join with the retest that way you get a risk-free trade and you get to join this move and make a lot of money suppose you are on the buy side the market now been pushing up 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 and then at some point it breaks the uh, the trend line to the downside now there is no need of you joining this trade at this point here because you do not know if it's going to continue or retrace back what do you do you go to a lower time frame of course there will be that break of the trend line again and now with the break you would expect the market to create a pattern any sort of pattern can be a wedge a channel a rectangle a triangle whatever pattern it builds or it gives you now you wait for the break of that pattern don't join with the break wait for the retest so don't join with the break always wait for the retest it gives you a better opportunity and at what point do you know that the retest has happened you pay attention to the price action or what we call the candlestick patterns that will happen here remember when you're trading price action you are reacting to what the market is doing basically price action should not be difficult because it's just you waiting and seeing what are they doing then you react to what is happening 
okay because price action is reaction or price action is how the market is behaving at a certain time the action of the price that is what we call price action so now the candlestick that shows up here the candlestick pattern that shows up here here is what will give you direction or give you the green light now to join the market and now instead of joining the market here and losing money on higher time frame you go to the lower time frame wait for the break and retest and you have a very profitable trade a chart example now we have the trend line break to the top side we've been pushing downside and then our trend line was broken to the top side now we may not have a good opportunity to join this trade one we do not know if that break was real or if the market is going to come back and reverse on us so what can we do we're going to wait for a consolidation pattern to appear and you see we have we are consolidating to the downside now with the pattern you want to have a break you want the break of that pattern to the top side and with every break this is usually either going to be a gap see this imbalance with this uh, break to the top no need to hurry or no need to join this market at this point wait for the retest of this gap and this usually gives a very high value trade every time you have a fair value gap or what we call imbalance with the break of a consolidation pattern this gives you a risk free with zero drawdown kind of entry just make sure that you pay attention to the price action or the candlestick patterns that appear here because they usually very fast and give a lot of money this is one of those trade setups that are high value and if you can just follow the rules and the rule is very simple once your trend line has broken and you're on an exhaustion level just sit on your hands pay attention even if it takes two days or a whole week the consolidation pattern is coming and once the consolidation pattern shows up now wait for the break with the break there are a lot of temptations to just join the market do not do not be tempted wait for the reactive move remember the move here must be reactive it must be slow it must be slow and the slower the move the higher or the more the heavier the explosion will be so make sure that this move is as slow as possible and once you get back to that imbalance or once you get back to that break area point then you can actually hit the market and hit them hard last but not least because actually this is the most important aspect of trading is where you basically use market structure now i've said this a million times market structure is the queen of this market so make sure that after this video you actually go back to the market structure video and watch it watch it keenly make notes learn the rules of market structure because if you do not know how to follow market structure then your chances of success in this market are minimal now how do we use market structure when it comes to breakouts now remember market structure basically is if you're pushing down you want to have a series of lower lows and of course if you're pushing up we want to have a series of higher highs i've talked about market structure forever therefore i do not need to get into those details there's a video if you still new on market structure or if you feel that you still need to refine your market structure game watch that video now let's get to a chart example on market structure when it comes to market structure you want to go to a higher time frame this can be your daily or your four hour if of course you're an intraday or a day trader and if you're a swing trader or your position trader or a short term medium term kind of trader of course you can go to a higher time frame i prefer my market structure on the four hour or the daily because it gives good structure now what you want to do first you want to identify if the market is coming from up or down very very important always look left always look left because looking left will give you a clear direction of where the market is coming from and therefore you know where the market is headed now this is euro usd on daily you also want maybe just for extra confirmation you can add that simple moving average that shows direction on my chart here i have a hundred SMA. is a video on moving average that i've done for different moving averages and i've always found the 100 SMA to be a good direction uh, showing kind of 
moving average. Now, if I'm coming from the top, I would expect the structure to be a series of lower lows. Now, why is that important? It is important because in the event that there is a break to the other direction, for example, look at this high. It was top hunted at some point on the daily time frame. Now, I cannot take this break as a real break to the other direction. Why? Because it's not following my structure. My structure is to the downside. Therefore, this can only be a stop hunt. So even if I go to the lower time frame, I will not be looking for a buy trade from this area. No, I would actually be looking for a sell trade. So every time there is violation of a high, anytime there is a violation or maybe a stop hunt, I will not be looking to go to the top side. Why? Again, my market structure is dictating to the uh, downside. No matter how tempting those breaks are to the top side, remember following the structure is key. Until now, this violation or reversal pattern showing at the end of that cycle. And therefore, you can pay attention to the buying cycle. And this is the current market. You see that we just retested a moving average to the top. And if this holds, then we would expect a move to the top side, hopefully to break that high. That's a lot of money that we can look forward to uh, earning. But again, it all depends with how the market structure uh, goes. If it violates or it gives us maybe a reversal pattern at some point, then maybe this move will continue to the downside. But in the meantime, we are likely to push to the top side. So remember, your market structure should be your guide and let your market structure be on the higher time frame. That way you will not be confused by those tiny reactive moves that usually happens on the lower time frame. So this is the end for the first breakouts. You've done part one and part two. I hope that you're going to pay attention to everything that we've learned today and make it part of your trading now a quick recap a quick recap of everything that we've handled today so we are either going to look for lower time frame continuation patterns remember these are the wedges the channels the triangles and if you have a break on the higher time frame make sure that your continuation pattern is in the same direction if you're dealing with a stop hunt on the higher time frame you want to have a lower time frame consolidation or what we call the rectangle or the range if it's on a higher time frame and there's a break to join that break or to ensure that that break is real wait for a shallow pullback instead of chasing the break itself remember the shallow pullback should be on the higher time frame now if you're having a consolidation for a while and then it has come to an exhaustion point you'd be having that one fake move one fake move taking out all the relatively equal lows or equal highs after that fake move pay attention to the change of your candlestick colors and join the move to the top side you can either do that on a higher time frame or you can go to the lower time frame and look for that exhaustion move giving you divergence either on TDI or RSI and the minute you have the change of candlestick colors you push to the opposite direction also on trend lines we can have the false breakouts and good breakouts on trend lines how do you take the good breaks by paying attention and being very patient to wait for the creation of an axis every time your trend line breaks create an axis by either drawing your zone adding in your trend line and also adding in your favorite moving average. When the market interacts with those three, then you can join the market as that is a good axis point. Also on trend line, you can use the continuation patterns. Remember the same continuation patterns that we covered on part one, you can use them as entry points while you're trading your trend line breaks and finally by use of market structure make sure that your market structure is on higher time frames now the higher time frame will be a good guide so that every time there is a break you can tell if it's false if it's going against your higher time frame 
uh, strap. That's the end of our session today. To learn more, you can get a copy of any of my Forex book from the Forex Exploit Online Academy page on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Do not forget to follow me on Facebook on LinkedIn. My page is Forex Exploit Online Academy. That is also where you find my different uh, books. Thank you so much for watching this video. We truly appreciate your continuous support. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure that you subscribe. Click the notification bell so that you're notified every time we have new content. Leave a comment on this video and also other videos about a video you'd like to see and also how your trading journey is working out with you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your trading community.